What's going on guys? My name is Mr. Hurricane and today I'm here to talk about NCAA Football 14 recruiting and last week we saw an NCAA 14 trailer about Dynasty Mode and much of that trailer was about recruiting and the changes that have been made. Then on Thursday they released an article on the EA website and I didn't come across this article until today, so I'm talking about it now a few days late, but I want to talk about it because recruiting is one of the things that I think a lot of us, including myself, were skeptical about in that trailer. My impressions of it were that the, the process seems very streamlined, but I'm hoping it's not too simple. But after reading the article, I'm a little bit more confident in it, and I think the logic is definitely better, even if the process is uh, simplified a little bit. So I have some notes here, and I'll link the article in the description if you want to see the full breakdown of recruiting. But here it is, Power Recruiting. It's a points-based system this year. Every week in the regular season, you'll get 5,000 points to allocate to your players that you're targeting and recruiting. And you'll have a max of 500 points to spend on each player a week, meaning you could spend 500 on 10 players, 250 on 20 players. You'll figure it out. You know how you want to separate your recruiting and who you want to focus on. The article then mentions that you have a separate pool of points for scouting, which is basically like last year you had like two or three hours, I actually forget how many each week, to spend on scouting your players, but now it looks like everything's going to be called points, so it's just not minutes anymore. And they actually haven't showed scouting in this trailer, I looked on their website to see any screenshots, I can't find scouting, which to me might mean that it's exactly the same and they're only showing the new things, so that's what I'm kind of getting, it's what I figure when I don't have the information right now and then also says that you'll have this is what the sentence says in the article there is one pool of points for scouting as well as recruiting and offering scholarships so you have to carefully manage your resources and choose wisely so I'm not sure if in scouting if points for that are tied into recruiting and offering scholarships and here is an image from the article where you can see that the user has 5,500 points and they're doing visits right here. You can use a left trigger, it looks like, to scroll through who's ready to visit and then do your scouting, maybe your recruiting and all on all different menus. But as of right now, I'm not exactly sure how many pools of points you have to work with. Maybe there's one for recruiting and one for scouting visit scholarships, but uh, I guess we'll see. And before I switch gears here, I want to talk about why I think a lot of people are skeptical, or at least why I'm skeptical about this new recruiting system. My hope is that it's not too simple. Like, if you're using a, a top-tier SEC team like in Alabama, I don't want it to be as simple as putting as many points as possible into a good player, and then you get them. I want to see some sort of elements of strategy implemented in here. And the thing is, like, you could choose how you recruit an NCAA 13, what you want to focus on. If you're a champion, contender like Alabama then you're really gonna hammer that into the heads of your recruits whereas if you're a team like UTSA like I use NCAA 13 you have to entice players with pitching them about playing time and whatnot and so in NCAA 13, you have to do that manually. Now, I expect the way you add points in NCAA 14, that same process will be done, but it's going to be done by the artificial intelligence behind the game that will automatically focus on what qualities of your team and your program need to be focused on when recruiting certain players. And so my belief is that more importance is going to be placed on your coach and your skills. You're going to obviously be able to upgrade different abilities of recruiting and building up your program, obviously, by winning. And so I think those things are going to be more important than how well you know how to recruit. And NCAA 13, if you know what you're doing, you can be a lower rated school and you know how to go after those high recruits. And I thought it was very simple some in some instances because promising players, playing time, conference championships, rivalry victories, that kind of stuff to me seemed very easy. You could recruit a guy in a pipeline state and promise him to play a game in his hometown or in his home state and you get like three or 400 points just for that promise. To me, some of the aspects aspects of NCAA 13 were too easy if you knew what you're doing and so I do like the emphasis placed on okay your coach is this and this is what he is able to do so I just the that process to me sounds good on paper but I want to see how well it is in execution and so when you build up the reputation of your coach and you really focus on those recruiting skills, I want those bonuses to really matter because that's what's going to separate the good coaches from the bad coaches and it'll make pl players know their role and know where they should be really because I don't think a team like UTSA should be looking at a bunch of five-star prospects in the game. And part of this is going to be aided in the bonuses and deal breakers they've added to the game, which this refers to when I mentioned this in the beginning of the video, I think the logic is going to be better in recruiting. Now, bonuses and deal breakers, dynamic pitch upgrades return as top interests. 
And I really like the concept behind this, and this would have been one of my things at the top of my wish list for at least Dynasty mode. If the top strengths of your school match up with the top interests of a player, then you get recruiting bonuses, and this to me is huge and needs to be in the game, and a big emphasis should be placed upon it. And the way I see recruiting changing is that it's becoming less of a skill-based and knowledge-based mechanic. In NCAA 13, if you know what you're doing, you can go out there with a lower-rated team and tackle the five-star prospects. You give them the right, the right promises, the scholarship to visit, and you give them the hour of attention every week, you might end up with that player, and there's a good chance that you will, even on Heisman difficulty. Now, the skill-based, that just that thought there, skill-based may sound good to players, but I honestly think that logic should prevail in this situation. And as you guys know if you watch my videos, realism matters to me a lot more than skill does. When I'm at least doing like a franchise or a dynasty, I want realism. I don't care about how good I am at the game. And so if they get the logic down correctly, this could be, recruiting could be even better and it would make a whole lot more sense. And let's put an example out there. Say we have a very good high school receiver. He could be dominant as a freshman. He probably wouldn't want to go to a school that has maybe a bunch of loaded receiver talents and he'd be on the bench for a while, maybe get redshirted his first year. Well, let's also say that a championship contending team is important to him. So maybe a, a high rated team that's also a championship contender, but happens to have a lot of loaded receiver talent, wouldn't be able to recruit him as successfully as a team that really needs receivers and needs them now. And one more example, and this example is really the reason why I wanted to see this, uh, something like this implemented into the game. The deal breakers and the bonuses. Championship contender. If you, if being a championship contender is extremely important to a player, he should be narrowing his list of schools he'll even answer the phone to, to about 15, 20, 30 at the most. And that's if you're talking about maybe a BCS Bowl or the National Championship, but I don't know how they tie it in there with if uh, they consider a bowl victory to be a championship contender or whatnot. But basically, you shouldn't be able to beat UNLV and rake in the top receiver talent that wants to go to a national championship and play for a conference championship contender. It's just not going to happen. And now let me lay out the deal-breaking aspect they mentioned in the article. If a player has a deal-breaker and you're a C-plus or worse, you can't add that player to your board or spend points on scouting or recruiting. If you get that grade above a C-plus, then you can start talking to that player. And I love that idea because I don't like the idea of being able to get the top 10 no matter what team you are yeah it's simple yeah it's a video game but i want realism and so i think the deal breakers could really just make players know their role and know who they have to go after and how they have to really build their school it's uh it's a long process and you can't just go after the five star prospects to do it you have to go after those threes and those fours once in a while let's move on now Recruits want to see scholarships earlier in the year to prove interest, and waiting too long can result in recruiting penalties or being locked out entirely. So the logic there is that players want to see their scholarship offers earlier in the year, and they want to see their visits later in the year. So you get a bonus for waiting to schedule a visit, and you'll get a bonus for giving them a visit at a ranked matchup or maybe a rivalry game, which I do like that. I'm not sure if that's already in the game. But what I'm about to talk about now is something I don't think I would have even thought of myself, but it's an excellent idea. Complimentary visits and competition visits. If you have like a quarterback, a receiver, and an offensive lineman together at a visit, you're going to get a bonus because that's simulating the idea of perhaps potential teammates all being together and talking to each other and talking about this team, and it will give you a, a bonus. And then when you talk about competition visits, if you have like four corners in on a visit, those dudes might be a little on edge because they realize it's competition, guys they're going to compete against, guys whose job they want to take, and it's just not as much fun of an atmosphere. And so I love that it's in the game, and to me, this is what I'm talking about when the logic is getting better. And I'm not yet completely sold on the process because I haven't played it. I don't understand the logic. I don't know how easy it is or how realistic it's going to be in NCAA 14. All I'm saying is that this process has some serious potential, I believe. And after this article and talking about it for the last nine minutes, this video is about twice as long as I thought it would be, I really think this has a lot of potential to be very good. And I thought Dynasty was already probably my favorite mode. I think it's the best as far as quality goes in the sports games that I play, although I, I like Madden more because I'm an NFL guy, but I think that this could be even better. I, I'm liking what I'm hearing now from a logic and conceptual standpoint. Now, execution, I can't talk about that yet. I don't know how it's going to be. There's a right and wrong way to do things, and it's not just about the concept, it's about execution. So, the concept, I believe, is good. Now, it's just 
How does it play? And so, what do you think if you're watching this video, guys? What are your thoughts on NCAA Football 14 recruiting and the process behind how you're going to be going after players and just some of the logical things I talked about? I am starting to become more confident, but once again, until I play it, I'm not going to be sold on it. And so, guys, leave your thoughts in the comment section. And on, e on EA's website, they also have news about the coach skills. And this was posted last Wednesday, so it's almost a week old as I put up this video. So if you guys do want to see me talk about coach skills and lay that out for you like I did in this video, if you want to see that, let me know in the comment section, let me know on Twitter, let me know everywhere. The news is about a week old, so if you guys really want to see it, I'll talk about it. But if not, then I won't talk about it. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time with more NCAA Football 14 news.